All right. Yeah. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is our first annual first generation student mentor, faculty, and staff panel. My name is Kelly Wenig, and I'm the director of the Academic Success Center here at Wayne State College. And I am relatively new to Wayne State since I just started here in August. But I am very excited to have everybody here and to help our first generation students learn a little bit more about some of the backgrounds of our staff here on campus. Unfortunately, we did have a representative from our faculty here, but she was ill today. Uh, so we had to find a quick substitute. Uh, so thank you, Melanie, for stepping in. Uh, but we do want to get started with just some introductions. Uh, so please, if you could introduce yourself with your name, title, which office you work in, and how long you've been here at Wayne State. And then once we do that, we can get started. Well, I'll jump in. Um, I'm Jay Collier. I'm the Director of College Relations, and I've been here for 14 years. Um, I'm Melanie, and I'm an, an academic advisor at the Holland Academic Success Center, and I've been here for about two and a half years. Hello, I'm Veronica Guzman. I work with the Office of Admissions, but I'm based here in South Sioux City's College Center. I serve the greater Siouxland area students, and I've been here at Wayne State for four years. Hi, everyone. I'm Henry Gaden. I'm our Transfer Admissions Coordinator within the Office of Admissions. I've been here at Wayne State for about three and a half years, including a year and a half in this transfer student role. All right, thank you everybody. I really appreciate that. So we're for, we're, our first question is gonna talk about our first generation experience. So if you could give us a little background on what your first gen experience was like, including what your family background is like, so we can talk about the different uh, backgrounds that make up first gen populations to begin with. Uh, Melody, I believe you're up first for this one. All right. Well, um, I grew up with a family. My parents were older than most, so their experience was um, literally in the 1950s. Each of them went to school for about a year. Um, neither of them graduated. One joined the army and the other got married um, like a good 50s <laughs> housewife. So by the time I was going to school in the 90s, they had no idea how to help me. So I was kind of on my own. And I... Um, I did not make necessarily the best choices as an undergrad and they didn't know how to help me. They didn't know I wasn't making good choices and they didn't really have the background or the understanding of how education works um, to guide me towards better choices. And so um, I wasted a lot of time and money actually uh, at first until I got my feet under me. So, um, and then I was the first one in my family to graduate from college. So, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my first generation uh, um, student experience, especially like uh, on the, let's say, recruitment side of things, my uh, parents were supportive of uh, me going to college. They both uh, have, um, graduated high school, but no post secondary education. Uh, did not know where to even start, where to apply for scholarships, the importance of visiting uh, colleges. And when it come, came time to applying for financial aid, it was really tough because uh, one of my parents uh, didn't understand why they had to uh, provide uh, their financial information on that FAFSA form. Back in uh, the day, it was still on paper before it went fully online. So uh, you can imagine the processing and then understanding the financial aid uh, award. Uh, and I remember my uh, admissions counselor at the time was bilingual. And in fact, uh, she was my inspiration to continue finishing college and then being in this profession that I'm in now. Uh, so it was overwhelming uh, at first, and especially uh, the financial aid part. But we managed to learn all those uh, four years how to handle that process. Because I um, think Jay's next, yeah. Okay. So I come from a long line of blue collar um, workers on my dad's side. Uh, they all worked in, I grew up in the South in Georgia. And so they all worked in the cotton mill um, in town. My great grandfather, my grandfather, and my father. Um, my mother was, uh, she had polio when she was a child. So she was disabled, um, didn't work, um, only finished high school. And 
So it, I never even really had an understanding that college was a possibility uh, for me um, until I had that right teacher who said, you know, you don't have to work in that mill just because everyone else in your family has. Um, there are other possibilities, you know, there. And, you know, she could see that I had a passion for um, a lot of things at the time, um, you know, math, science, uh, creative writing, those sorts of things. And so, but when it came time as I graduated from high school, I was still, it just didn't seem real to me that I could go to college. Um, so went to the, went into the military and served. So then when I finally did start college um, at Colorado State, not only was I first generation, but I was also a non-traditional student. Mm -hmm. So, wow, um, navigating college without any idea of what it was supposed to be, of what the experience was supposed to be like. And then you're that annoying non-traditional kid who sits up front and answers all the questions <laughs> um, and makes the class have to stay late because you won't shut up. Um, you know, it, it was a re remarkable experience, um, but it just takes having that right person to step into your life to say, you know, there's all these doors um, it's just not that one door right there. It's all of these doors that you can open. And as a first generation student, you know, that's the, that's the thing is look at those doors that are in front of you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. I, I totally agree. Henry, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think based on everybody else here in this group, maybe I come into this with a family that had maybe a little more um, college experience. My, uh, my dad had an associate degree um, in electro electronics and worked as an electrician. Uh, my mom, she did one year of school and then dropped out. So I became the first in my family to obtain a bachelor's degree. Um, you know, growing up and, and going through that kind of the college search process, I really felt through the search and through my college experience that I was really well off. Um, I was a high achieving student in high school, so I always felt like I was ahead of the game and, and kind of knew everything. But I think it's, you know, it's years later that you look back and you realize how many limitations there were um, or just things you didn't know being a first generation student. Um, I also grew up in a small rural community. So, you know, just the community around me wasn't, um, you know, was, was a large percentage first generation as well. Um, I think, you know, in my college search, I only, I toured two schools, um, which, you know, was enough for me to kind of snap and just make a decision. Um, I don't know how well informed I was, but I just, you know, made a decision and stuck with it. Um, still really love my alma mater. Um, but again, I just, I didn't put a lot of effort into the college search because I didn't have that person who knew all the questions to ask. Um, one of the, my most vivid memories, I would say, from the college process was uh, the FAFSA, so kind of what Veronica talked about, but only in my day it was on the computer, so I'm not quite as dated, but um, you know, I was familiar enough to use a computer to fill out this uh, financial aid information. My parents do not know how to run a computer hardly at all, and so um, I just remember, you know, they had all their tax documents out, and I knew nothing about that, so they're looking through all the questions and all the information, and I'm on the computer telling them what I need, and it was just this you know, back and forth, uh, almost yelling, like, I need this. Well, what is that? That doesn't exist, you know, um, because none of us really knew what we were doing. Um, even though they'd been through school before, so many things had changed um, in that process. And then, you know, I think the other thing that being a first generation student from a smaller community um, impacted me was in terms of like, you know, what program I wanted to study. I was so limited by just the things I knew and had experienced in my small town life. Um, so, you know, things like um, engineering or, you know, even doctor and lawyer and all of those things felt so far fetched to me because I'd never experienced people in those professions. You know, I was used to people who were electricians and working in manufacturing and, you know, the small town business type world. So um, adventuring farther out than that just felt so um, otherworldly. And I think you know, looking back, maybe limited me to only being interested in those majors that I was familiar with. Yeah, that, that's really interesting that everybody, everybody says that basically similar stories that it is, it's sort of a, 
scary experience almost. It's a mysterious experience. And ever anybody jump in here at any time. But, you know, two people mentioned FAFSA, you know, as a, as a major memory of their experience in college. And when we think about first generation, we're talking about generational experiences and generational change. So, you know, what first gen students have are, you know, major, you know, generationally altering decisions that they're making. And it is, it is really impressive. And everybody in here is going through that. You know, my first, my own experience, I'm not a traditional first generation student because my mother has a bachelor's degree. However, we had no experience at all really going through college. My mother really didn't speak about it. My dad had, uh, he squeaked through his high school education and education was not a, a priority in our family. So getting into, you know, the university system and the college system, I had a, a lot of similar experiences to you all where I just didn't know what I was doing. I went to the dorms and I expected, you know, dorm life to be like a movie where it was just partying and crazy stuff happening all the time because, you know, pop culture was very influential to me. So it, it is very interesting to see and hear everybody else's experiences and the different perspectives from how we get into our first gen lives. Um, so, and that kind of brings me to the next question, uh, or, you know, the, the next kind of discussion. Uh, what programs did you use the most, or which programs did you think you, uh, that you wish you would have used the most when you were in college? And we can start with, you know, Henry, then Veronica, then, then Jay, then Melanie. I would just like to hear, like, what did you use, or what did you wish you would have used more of during your experience? Yeah, and I just to, for a second want to bridge back to what you just said, Kelly. I think one of the interesting things for me when I talk to students is hearing about what were the family pressures like in terms of going to college. So for me, um, my parents really never like set it as an expectation. It was more an expectation on myself. And I think I heard the same from a couple of the others. So, you know, some families, you get pushed into college almost a little too hard mm -hmm. in other experiences it's sort of indifference. And so you kind of make up your own decisions and you do all the work yourself to get to get to that point. Um, in terms of programs that I used or maybe wish I would have used, one that was really influential for me was the honors program at my uh, institution. I was eligible for it. I remember my admissions counselor telling me like, hey, there's this honors thing. Do you want to do that? Um, and I was like, well, what are the benefits and um, what's it going to do for me? I, I really didn't understand what it was all about um, because coming from a small school i just didn't have a concept of what that even meant um, but i said you know why not i'll just do it i'll see how it goes um, it ended up being probably the most impactful part of my college experience because it really introduced me to um, students from so many different backgrounds you know i was i was an ag major um, you know working with students who were um, in medicine and pharmacy and engineering and all of these different fields uh, and so it just kind of broadened my horizons as to, you know, what careers were out there, what different experiences that students had. You know, I was with students who grew up in big cities and small towns and, and you know, across the country. Um, it also opened a lot of experiences, you know, for professional development with different conferences and um, honors courses that I took. And sort of, again, that broadening your horizons to things outside of your um, major, but just, you know, contributing to general society as a whole and growing as a person. So I think that was a really influential one for me. Um, one that I wish I knew more about when I was in college was the TRIO program. Uh, I never heard about it until I started working at Wayne State and realized that, you know, TRIO exists and uh, kind of the scope of it. And, you know, looking back, it's like uh, with being a first generation student, my family was low income. Um, I definitely would have qualified for it and had that extra support and extra help, um, you know, academically maybe didn't need it, but I think sometimes, you know, socially or culturally, or as far as, you know, just kind of getting some general guidance around how a college campus operates, uh, some of those pieces would have been really helpful. So I think that's a great program for our first generation students um, that I maybe wish I would have uh, had some experience with when I was in school. All right. Thanks, Henry. Mm -hmm. With uh, my experience, uh, I um, did partake in the TRIO program. So like the hashtag okay. says TRIO works. And uh, the TRIO program really was beneficial to me, provided me the necessary help that I needed to succeed in college and also uh, mentorship. 
as well. And one of the subject areas uh, that I wasn't uh, very strong in, especially math, um, I did have like a math tutor and that I met with her uh, about once a week uh, just to go over the important concepts because I knew that college algebra was going to be very a very challenging class. Uh, but also in the TRIO program, I took advantage of going on uh, uh, um, the trips that they offered as uh, uh, for students who were on track to, uh, you know, doing good, getting a good GPA. And uh, I met other friends as well and other uh, um, staff members on campus. I wish I would have taken advantage of study abroad. I don't know why I just had that. Uh, I thought maybe I didn't qualify, but knowing that if I was going to get uh, some college credit and maybe a possible uh, um, scholarship, uh, I wish I would have had that opportunity to travel the world uh, for one semester and get to know another uh, culture, uh, interact with uh, other uh, uh, students, and uh, I think that would have been a, a great experience uh, for me. But uh, with uh, being a first gen uh, student, I came from a family who had high expectations of getting good grades. And if I uh, mm. had any other college expenses, uh, my dad only helped me pay for books. That's about it. But everything else, he said, you're responsible for it. So I worked part time at a local grocery store. Mm -hmm. And the um, good thing about the TRIO program is that they kept me on check, making sure that I don't overwork too many hours so I could stay on track um, um, with uh, being suc a successful college student. So uh, with uh, also being a first gen student, uh, sometimes uh, you have uh, um, with parents that don't really have that experience. Uh, I remember that it was hard for my mom to see that I was going to go because of course I'm the, oh, I'm the oldest and it was hard for her to accept that I was going off to college that why am I living on campus and she says well the college is not too far you can just come and go but I wanted that experience really bad so it's another challenging thing I think in certain families is sometimes the culture um, as well yeah absolutely thank you very much Jay go ahead um, you know, I didn't really know that there were any programs to really help you <laughs> as a, as either a first generation student or a non-traditional student. I just sort of showed up and started taking classes at Colorado State and um, was lucky enough to uh, stay after class and talk with a history professor one day and he sort of took me under his wing and served as a mentor. So I guess that's always a good piece of advice is to be on the lookout as a non-traditional student for those people who can serve as mentors along the way and help you navigate the process. Because like Veronica and everyone else has said, you're really not gonna get a lot of support from your family um, in terms of them understanding what you're doing. Like I had been away from home in the military for a while. So when I made the transition to go to college, my parents were basically like, oh, that's nice. And why do you need my tax returns again? Um, so, you know, echoing the, the FAFSA stuff that we've already heard. Uh, so that was kind of a battle that, that to get them to understand I really need that. Um, even though I've been out and independent for a while, they still say I have to have that. And um, But finding a professor who he was from Texas, uh, he and I, you know, saw eye to eye about a lot of things. And he really, he was my mentor through not just my bachelor's degree, but my master's degree at Colorado State. And it, you know, so look for someone like that. So, and I, I, you know, I really wish that I had gone over to, cause I'm sure student services at Colorado state, you know, huge school, they probably had 18 different programs that I could have taken advantage of. Um, I just didn't know those things even existed. They weren't as aggressively hands-on back then um, in school as they are now, especially, you know, at a school of, 25,000 versus, you know, us at 3,600 or whatever. Um, so, you know, I really wish I'd taken a few minutes to sit down and, and read something or read a brochure. They didn't really have a website, you know, back then, like we have now where, you know, within a few minutes, you can know every office on campus and what everything does and who it's all for. And you can have people like Kelly and Melanie who are chasing you around campus going, oh no, really, you're gonna come and see me and talk to me about these things. 
you know, it was just some random guy who was assigned to advise me who would be like, yeah, take that. And that was the extent of, you know, the involvement I had with anyone until I had a mentor. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the best thing that happened. That was the best guidance, the best thing I took advantage of. And then in terms of what you had asked about what we wish, wow, get to know your college, mm -hmm. get to know all the different resources that are available for you because they're literally sitting in their office pining to work with you. Um, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Thank you. Yes. Melanie. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I have to echo what everyone else said. I don't know that I ever took advantage of a student support office. I assume they were there. Um, if they were, they weren't being aggressively marketed toward me. Um, and, you know, Jay, like you said, some kids, um, their parents are ambivalent about, or maybe Henry, their parents are ambivalent about college and some sort of get pushed. And I, I was one who really was pushed toward college. Um, I was the youngest by far, um, and I had done very well um, in school. And so the assumption of course was, well, of course, Melanie's gonna go to college. And then that was it. There was never any idea of how that was gonna happen. So I, I didn't, I don't think, I didn't do a single campus visit until mm -hmm. sort of the last minute. And then I went to that school that day. Um, it was, you know, and I didn't know to prep for things like, like I grew up in the South, so I grew up in SAT land, not ACT land, but I didn't know that I was competing with students who had taken prep courses. I didn't know that was a mm -hmm. thing. I showed up one day, I took the SAT, that was my score. I didn't know people took it again and really worked. I didn't understand that, you know, people really took school so seriously, right? To me, it was just kind of like, well, I got, you know, I guess I'm going to go to college. But I was lucky, and I really, I can't emphasize it enough how much I agree with Jay on this, that, so I started at a very, very small private school um, that looked actually a lot like this campus in terms of size and um, like, you know, faculty student ratio. So we really got to know our faculty. Our faculty got to know us. We could go hang out in the educational uh, departments and faculty would just sort of be hanging out and we could, we could hear their conversations and I could, and we could be with older students. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, I felt like my mind was being blown every day just by the conversations I was hearing and the things I was learning. And so being brave enough to just sort of walk into a department and hang out or walk into a group of students and just sort of sit on the edge and listen and eventually you get invited in. If I had just stayed in my dorm or just hung out in a quiet, safe space, I never would have had those experiences. And like anytime I could go to a lecture or a presentation, I went and then the conversations that happened after is where I learned so much about how to be a college student, you know, from listening to the professors talk, listening to the other students talk, um, and just really being, being open to that experience and, and recognizing, I, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just, I'm gonna learn from all of them. So yeah, taking advantage of just the people that you have on campus, either the professionals that are trying to help you or just the people who are hanging out being the professionals that they are and learning from watching them and talking with them um, will ch completely change your experience, I think, on, on a campus, so. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I know, uh, again, you know, I, I have a little bit of a different experience, but when I went to college, I went on one campus visit and I went to one school. I applied to one school because I didn't even, I just kind of picked the, the closest school to me it was a branch of the University of Wisconsin system, and that's where I went. And I know I sat in my dorm, I hung out with my friends, I went there with friends from high school, and we kept our little clique because it was scary to branch out. And I think that's a really common experience for a lot of first generation students. And the best advice, everybody here said that, is that we, weren't aware, we were not aware of the services that were available until we started getting out of our comfort zones. So some of the best advice you can do is go find somebody that works on campus. And you, it is very easy to figure out who works on campus. You see those people every day, you know, they, they all have a certain energy when they walk around, they're going from A to B very quickly. If you ask them to just ask a question quick, I guarantee you they will stop and be very happy to help. You know, everybody, you know, on the screen, 
has worked, you know, works at Wayne State College because we love helping people and we're very energetic for the most part. You know, I, I eat sometimes and I get, you know, sluggish in the afternoon. Uh, that's a bad joke. Sorry, folks. You have to listen to my terrible humor. Uh, but, you know, we, we are all excited to really help out. So, you know, and, and a lot of us have a similar experience, you know, as, as first gen students who want to make sure that other people don't have the same struggles that we do. We get into this field for that specific reason. So uh, we, we, uh, we'll get to the last question out of the three, uh, but it's you know, pretty similar to the ones that we were talking about. Uh, so we can amend it just a little bit. But the question is, what advice do we have for our first gen students? Or you know, is there anything you would want a first generation student to know or do when they they're, they're even searching for college. Um, we can run through it in Veronica, Jay, Henry, and Melanie, uh, and drop any any important knowledge that you think you have for, for students at all. I uh, would highly encourage uh, first-gen students is to, uh, um, it's easier said than done, staying positive. But one thing you could do is say to yourself that you are a scholar. You're gonna pass uh, your biology exam. Oh, you are going to uh, write a great paper, say great speech, uh, because I think as we uh, say great, nice things to ourselves, it will uh, help our subconscious mind uh, know that, okay, we are a, a great student. So I know sometimes with even the barriers that we um, might go, um, have gone through or you may go through is uh, it, it's normal sometimes to feel like, oh, uh, I don't know if I could make it. And there are times that I remember I wanted to throw the towel and like, screw it, I'll just go work full time. But uh, no, stay uh, on track, uh, visit with uh, your professors if you know uh, something you didn't understand on the lecture for the day and uh, or ask a classmate for what are they understood as, uh, as they were take, taking notes. And it is okay to ask for help. There's no such thing also as a silly question or thinking that, oh, I don't know if I, uh, what the professor is going to think about me. No, you have to focus on um, yourself and know that you are, uh, you're getting an education to help improve your life, uh, the life of your family, and you're gaining a lot of uh, skills and wisdom that you're going to take back to your community or who knows where life will take you, um, take you to. So, uh, um, you know, things like that, saying those nice uh, things to myself. And in fact, I bought uh, something not too long ago, which is uh, sitting behind me. It says, thankful, grateful, blessed. So at least it serves me as a reminder to um, stay positive. Great. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, um, you know, three things. First, it, it, you have choices as a college student. Um, even as a first generation student, you have choices and be careful about the choices that you make and how much you're biting off and whether you're biting off more than you can chew, especially when it comes to finances. Um, it's really easy to fall into a lot of debt um, in college and there are a lot of really good, really affordable colleges out there where you can get the same education for a lot less than other people um, and it's going to give you that same advantage whether you are spending 15 grand a year or 50 grand a year. So just be mindful of that. Um, the second piece is that, you know, as a first generation student, you have just as much a right to be there as anyone else. Um, so take advantage of every club, every activity, every opportunity to engage in class, to speak in class, to whatever it is. You have just as much of a right to be there as anyone else, and you don't have to feel like there's any stigma associated with the fact that no one else in your family has been to college, because really, that's almost a special status. Like, you're changing your generation. You're changing your family, which leads me to point three, and that is, now that I'm a dad, and I have kids who, one who's off in the working world right now and has some college under his belt, another who's a freshman here at Wayne State, and then one who's a freshman in high school, their experience for college has been so much better and so much easier and just like, oh yeah, FAFSA, I'll fill that out for you, no problem. You know, that need some help with those essays? How are we gonna tackle this? What's our strategy gonna be? You know, and can relate to them about their classes, can relate to them about what they're going through 
and just this whole thing for them. It's always been, Oh yeah. The next thing for me is college. Like there, there's never been a doubt in their mind. There's never been. And then for my oldest who actually started college and then stopped out to go into the working world, to raise a family and support his family for me, I know there's a lot of options. I've been through on both sides of it for, so for me, that wasn't a problem, you know? And I think it, you know, he was on the opposite side. He's like, Oh my God, do you think less of me? Cause I'm not in college. I'm like, Oh no, I love you. You know, you're doing your thing. You're raising your family. You'll come back to it one day if it's right, or you'll keep doing what you're doing, which is great. So, you know, it really does change the trajectory of who you are as a person, who your children are when they come behind you. Like, it's just such an amazing thing. So just remember, you know, you don't have to settle. You belong there and you're making every day that you do what you do, you're making such a difference for the future of your family. Great. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, Henry. Yeah, so I think one of the pieces that I think about as far as advice or what was really a helpful tool in my college experience, and I'm, I'm going to speak at this from probably a high level, but I'll try to break it down and make it more relatable for students. But so much of what you experience in your life, and it's, it's so true of college, is just networking. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about, you know, obviously getting to know the different services and the different people around campus. Um, but I think it really comes down to, you have to put yourself out there and get outside of your comfort zone because that's gonna lead to so many opportunities that you didn't know about. So, you know, I, I think as a first generation student, sometimes I didn't know, didn't know things existed. I didn't know opportunities that were out there. I didn't even know what questions to ask. And so, being presented with an opportunity that I didn't know anything about and just taking the chance to say yes to that opportunity opened so many other doors after that. And so like Jay said, kind of changes the, your trajectory as a person through those experiences that you can have. So for me, um, you know, a big one was the honors college, but that led me to other things. And so, you know, I was presented with an opportunity to be a part of an organization. I went to, um, South Dakota State, which is the largest institution in South Dakota. So it was a very big school. Um, but, you know, it's easy to get lost in the crowd in that sort of situation. So when you're presented with an opportunity to engage with a group, um, I think saying yes to me opened those next doors. So I, I became a part of a, an organization. There's over 100 students that were involved in it. Um, felt like an outsider for the longest time because these other students in this group um, knew exactly what this was about. They've had experience with it. Their older siblings were a part of it. Um, they had family history with, with the group. Um, I just felt like an outsider, but the more I, I got involved and the more I got to know people through the organization, um, you know, it led me through some other opportunities and I became involved in another club and another organization. And pretty soon I was a president of this club and, you know, got to attend conferences. And so, you know, the networking skills that you get, um, through just being involved on campus, I think pay off big time. And whether it's a student service um, or it's just a club, it's gonna open doors for you. And I think another piece to that is, is going out to meet with the student services or especially your advisors on campus. I can think of um, very easily three big time mentors that I had um, during my time in college. And you know, one was from the Honors College, one was from you know, my major and one was just from um, the school or the academic area that I was involved in. And each of those people played such a big role in my experience because they, they saw who I was and, and you know, the, the skills and talents that I had, and they pointed me in the right direction to different opportunities um, and different things that I would really enjoy. Um, so I'm really appreciative of that. And, and I think, again, just going in to, to build that relationship with your advisors I had the lights click off there <laughs> um, to meet with your advisors, to get to know other students um, and build yourself through that network is going to open so many doors to things that, you know, looking back when I first started college as a freshman, I would have never guessed that I would have had all of the opportunities, experiences that I did because I didn't even know those, those things existed. Thank you so much. Melanie, speaking of advisors. Speaking of advisors. <laughs> um, 
So I'm going to get philosophical for a second, and it comes from my personal experience. Uh, the research I've done on first-generation students, I've been researching them for a few years now, um, so I, I'm pretty intimately familiar with the challenges first-generation students face. And then also my experience as an advisor, because I see this play out in my office. And so here's where I'm here's going to get um, touchy-feely and philosophical. And that is that if you're a first generation student, odds are you come from possibly blue collar family. Uh, all the men in my family have to wash their hands at the end of the night before they come home because they've been working with them, right? And that's how I grew up, right? Um, and I have infinite respect for those people who show up every day and make something work or build something or fix something, right? To me, they're like self-taught engineers. They might not see themselves that way, but I'm always just in awe of what smart, capable people do just on their own with no education. Um, so it can be really difficult to reimagine yourself and to define yourself in a new way because it might feel like somehow you're rejecting your family, right? Because if we talk about making your life better, well, somehow is that an insult to the family that, that you love and that, that got you here? Um, and, we can, and it can be so hard to be comfortable saying, you know, I love and respect my family and everything they're about. And at the same time, I'm going to change my life. And I'm gonna, I'm, my life is going to look different from theirs. And it's not better or worse necessarily. It's just different. And I see students struggle. I struggled. I know first gen, one of their biggest struggles is taking a deep breath and just accepting that they're going to be different and that college makes you different. And that that doesn't mean that you're rejecting your family. And it can be hard to go home and your family says, well, what are you studying in school? And you realize that it's going to take like five and a half days and two PowerPoints <laughs> to catch them up, to tell them about the paper you have to write. And it feels really awkward. And sometimes you need that mentor who can help you just figure out a simple way to have those conversations with your family so you don't feel like you're leaving them behind or they don't feel left behind. So you can bridge both worlds, but you have to accept deep down that like there's two worlds now, right? There's the world you came from and then there's the world you're building and the people around you that maybe seem like they have it all together. First of all, they don't, I promise, <laughs> right? The other students, none of them have it together, but rather than comparing yourself to them and feeling like the outsider or feeling we've all talked about being the one who felt like we didn't know and we didn't want to ask, um, rather than letting that make you feel like you don't belong there, um, Learn from them, right? If there's someone that you're, you can't identify with, then stand off to the side and watch them and learn from them. Because maybe they do know something you don't know. Maybe they're watching you because you know something they don't know. But it really is, it's about deciding that you're going to lean all the way in, that you're going to be all in to this experience and learn everything you can and not be afraid of letting it change you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would just, I think, in summary, everybody agrees that, you know, seek your advice from people that just look like they know what they're doing. Seek out your advisors on campus. Seek out offices that are available. If you're interested in something, there is a 99% chance that we have something related to that. If you like to play video games, we, ha we have a video game club. If you like to, you know, climb trees, there might be a tree climbing club, you know, there, there is stuff on campus literally for everybody. You know, it, people are, you know, communal. We like to get together. We like to do things. And if you have an interest, there's almost certainly somebody that has a similar interest with you. And then the other thing too, is just that when you seek out advice, listen to what that person has to say. It sounds really simple, but a lot of people ask for advice and then say, oh, that doesn't apply to me especially if you're asking a faculty advisor or a staff member, this is somebody who has dedicated their life to making students learn and learn better. And if you come and ask them for something, just think they might know a little bit something about this that you're not even aware of that you're experiencing. I know myself, I did not listen to a lot of people when I went to college and it took me a long time to 
to have that awareness about myself to say, you know what, that person was right and I should have listened to them. And it's a humbling experience. It's something that, you know, you have to, you know, eat a little crow for a little bit, but it's okay. People are here to help. And once you ask for advice, just listen to that advice because those people want to help you and they have additional perspectives. And this is what we do for, for a career. So with that, I'd just like to invite anybody else to have a last word if anybody would like to say anything. Otherwise, we can wrap up. Anything? All right. Well, I think then we can just say, I'd like to say thank you to the panel. I really appreciate you, everybody. And to anybody that's watching this, please reach out to any of us. Um, Kelly Wenig, Melanie Loggins, Henry Gaden, Victor, uh, Veronica Guz Guzman, and Jay Collier. We are all so excited to help. And then all to you know, all of the staff members at Wayne State College, we are all happy to help out. So please ask us anything. Uh, we're very excited. Uh, and uh, we hope you have a great day.